Some practitioner said to me, you know, Ethan, you know, new power, new guy coming in, Hu Jintao. Uh, uh, you know, you better hurry your research up. You better be done in the next three or four months because the persecution's going to end now. And that was about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, this is not about one man. It never will be. This is about a system. My view about uh, the Communist Party actually came a long way since my childhood. My father died in the Cultural Revolution because of the persecution by the local authorities. And he was uh, persecuted because of uh, uh, writing a letter for one uh, innocent uh, villager that uh, complained about uh, the, the, their life. And uh, he was uh, persecuted to death and that uh, gave, gave my family you know, in, uh, a really a big blow and uh, the life uh, at, at that time was uh, very hard. At that time Mao Zedong was uh, quite old and a little confused. They must uh, do some things um, to, to wash away all the old things. Then they began to do the bad things, to clean all the Western things, old things, including those good things. When I was in the childhood, you know, we uh, were we were all educated that uh, uh, communist party is uh, good, is uh, is the unique uh, organization, unique. Uh, a party that uh, can truly represent uh, uh, the people's will. Even now that uh, most uh, Chinese people uh, believe in such a doctrine that uh, uh, the, the Communist Party is uh, the unique party that uh, truly represents the people and serves the people. friends, they may wonder if it's true. But uh, I think um, normal people cannot get these things. You cannot touch it. The impression that I had on China when I was living in China is very different from the impression that I got while I was living overseas. Both my dad and mom worked for the government. Uh, so we were raised um, with the notion that the, I don't know, the, the authorities are always right. And we were told that we needed to appreciate uh, the government for everything that we had. They got us to into this uh, a better and better life. That's how, you know, I was trained to think. And that's what I uh, believed. In the 1950s, Chairman Mao initiated a great leap forward uh, because he thinks that he has the great command over the economy. He, he has many people that are willing to commit to socialism, so he initiated reform. If he can motivate the people, then everything was possible. He, he thinks that the wages, the salary, the bonus, that sort of thing are nonsense. So he tried to motivate them um, by using the political campaigns. Uh, by asking the people to selfishly commit to the socialism's uh, ideal. They ignore the production of the, uh, the foods, and as a result of that, many people starve to death. To a certain extent, Chairman Mao has lost his power in, in the end of the 1950s. 
uh, it was the Liu Xiaoqi who had took up the power. He tried to slow down everything. He tried to give time to the peoples to recover from the setback of the economy. And to a certain extent, to a great extent, he succeeded. And uh, the economy will be recover. Everything was get back to normal. Um, but Chairman Mao at that time thought that this is not the right way to socialism. Uh, he thought that Liu Xiaoqi had betrayed the missions of the socialism. So he, we start the cultural re revolutions. To, we emphasize the importance of human beings, uh, the initiative. Our education uh, taught us not to have such things. The doctrine of uh, Maxim is about the class struggle. When they finish the the opposition of uh, in China, the the Kuomintang, the national government, they uh, now turn gun to the people. They have never stop the campaign, political campaign, from uh, the establishment of uh, the communist government in 1949. And the millions of people died in, in this uh, campaign in the name of uh, revolution, in the name of uh, serving the people, contributing to the people. They need people to understand that the killing is good for the society. And uh, so the, the Communist Party is uh, against uh, humanity. So Hu Jintao, Deng Xiaoping, all these people are dictators. They are not uh, elected. They are put by some by special group, uh, the, the special interest group. And um, the they can rep cannot uh, represent uh, the will of the people. Of course, they can never represent uh, the um, advancement uh, of the social development uh, as it as they claim. And uh, the uh, the uh, the one it's a big issue. Huh? I first went to 1972 during the Cultural Revolution, around the time that President Nixon had gone to China and the ping pong team had gone to China. And it was much more repressive then, and it continued to be very repressive until after Mao died in 1976. And then there was a very slow, partial change in the treatment of dissidents and religion that then went on from, say, late, the late 1970s uh, up to now. But it has been very slow, and to use the word partial doesn't really explain. I mean, it's still a very repressive place. And as I say, there are certain subjects dealing with religion and minority ethnic peoples, which are totally off limits. There is no single regime in, in human history has such a tight control over its people. You know, if you look at the Soviet Union, if you look at Nazi Germany, they're all evil, you know, regime. But comparing to the Chinese Communist Party, they, they you know, they, you know, there's like a lot of things, much worse, much, much worse inside China. Shortly after the communists take over. Many countries uh, were very reluctant 
to um, establish economic relationship with China. And so um, it was only after you know, uh, the uh, PRC was um, established for about 20 years uh, before the US uh, and Japan and other countries began to uh, establish formal dip diplomatic uh, tie with China. Communist uh, government is a dictatorship. It's a continuation of feudal system. It's uh, uh, when I was in the middle school, I have thought of uh, uh, what kind of revolution uh, can uh, launched by the Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao Zedong. I always think that uh, it was just a, a peasant uprising. It's uh, just for the purpose of uh, of uh, taking power. It's uh, so the peasants uh, uh, had been used by the uh, Communist Party. I think he's great. Of course, uh, he's safe for the Chinese people. Um, but uh, at, uh, when he was old, he made uh, some huge mistakes. Man, makes all the Chinese people suffer. deny his uh, contribution or mistakes. Deng saw what had happened during the Cultural Revolutions. He thought it totally absurd what, what Chairman Mao did in terms of economics um, developments. So he tried to introduce the market. To a certain ex ex extent, Deng Xiaoping's reform succeeded in uh, um, allowing people to have more economic freedom. But he did not change the political system in China. They are still using the same political system of, as what Chairman Mao has used for 20 years or 30 years. So um, you can see that they are running on an even basis, particular performance in terms of economic development, but uh, you have a stagnant growth in, in terms of political reforms. Corruption become an inevitable political consequence of rapid economic liberalization. And there is no mechanism to address this problem, and people cannot speak out. People have no right even to engage lawyers of, of their own choice to de defend their rights. Although the, the government said that they want to have rule of law, but the, the court, the judges in the court were appointed by the officials. So everything is under the party control. When there is no accountability, the official usually will abuse the system. At that time, there is uh, no choice for the graduates. If you want to live in, in China, you, you, uh, the government allocated a job for the university graduate. So I was allocated to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, the uh, and uh, sorry, it's okay. Yeah, Mini uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Yes. And after you know, I was uh, uh, I got the job uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, I started to know more about uh, the outside world. And um, 
and uh, I was uh, at that time I was quite eager to go overseas. So um, I applied for many times and uh, was allowed to to go to Fiji in 1994. One of the questions was, are you a member of the Communist Party uh, or the uh, Fascist Party or something like that? And I was shocked and I asked my dad, so how could they put the two together? Because we always, we, we knew that, you know, the Nazis or Fascists, are, you know, they're, they're bad, they, they killed a lot of people. But I didn't realize that in the eye of Western society, uh, you know, Communist Party is mention the same breath as other parties. So that's why they want to change Falun Gong, you know. They want to change practitioners to, to give up their beliefs. Oh, yeah. And they said they can do it. They think they can do it. Even the, in the beginning of, uh, uh, in 1950s to 1980s, they try very hard to to ask all the religious you know, people to, to give up their beliefs, destroy the temples, destroy the churches, organize the, uh, uh, the Christians, Catholics, uh, teach them the, uh, the party doctrine, try to, to control, spiritually control the uh, people. Mm. And they have never stopped trying to control the people's spirit. So that's uh, the one uh, uh, major feature of a dictatorship. That's uh, the one uh, uh, major feature of a dictatorship. At that time, the students uh, hope that uh, the party will reform itself automatically from inside, so the party can be a, a democratic party, the party can be a good party, and uh, the, um, the, all the corruption uh, can be uh, uh, prevented uh, uh, by the, the good policy, good laws. When um, the Tiananmen massacre took place, I was already um, in, in the United States. So, and I did not believe a word um, that the Western media had said. Even I saw with my own eyes on TV those footages about uh, burning and uh, people running around with uh, uh, gunshots and all that. I thought that was put together by anti-China forces. Uh, really, that's. That's what I thought. I didn't believe it because I, I thought that there are a lot of countries out there after China because they they don't they either don't like China or afraid that it's getting too strong or whatever. So it took me a few years uh, to start to believe that it really actually happened. Uh, you know, the uh, CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, really killed uh, a lot of students and the. The communist government is persecuting people like me and my friends. Those people I, person, I personally know. Um, that's when I, I think, is my 100% believe that, that the Tiananmen massacre truly happened. I know it took a long, it took me a long time, but just if you know the background of my upbringing, you know my both, uh, my parents, they're both are members of the party, worked for the government. Um, yeah, you you will know, but uh, at least I'm, I'm glad now that I know uh, the, the true picture, the true stories. Social tensions are being built up in China, which is a closed society, and all this tension are not detectable or visible from outside. So maybe, you know, the social and political consequence is that there would be frequent 
and uh, sp uh, sporadic outbreaks of disp uh, disturbances, protests, or even riots in different parts of China. And nobody knows when this outburst of uh, riots or disturbances um, may turn into a larger scale which is uncontrollable. It will continue to be a bad lookout until there is a completely new style of government in China. Just as, and the question is survival. Can Tibet, for instance, survive as a Tibetan place? In fact, is there much left to save now? And in the same sense, can a movement like Fa Falun Gong survive? Now, the advantage of Falun Gong is that, of course, it has many adherents outside China and not just in Asia. So there will always be something. In the case of Tibet, Tibet is Tibet. It only exists there, no matter how much sympathy it has abroad. I think it's almost impossible for the uh, Chinese Communist Party to give up uh, persecuting against Falun Gong. In my view, that uh, Falun Gong can only, you know, uh, restore its normal position to its uh, its uh, get rid of uh, the the persecution at uh, uh, the the collapse of the communist party. If uh, Falun Gong become legitimate in China, the ban uh, was uh, is uh, lifted then China must be a democracy. So it seems, you know, uh, very hard for, for Falun Gong um, practitioners. And the, the Falun Gong practitioners are the most seriously persecuted group in China, worse than, than Christians and Catholic. And, uh, Buddhism, Buddhists, and other groups. Now, as to whether the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, will collapse, now that is a, a multi billion dollar question. There has to be a government that gets out of the way first, that, that understands about a free press and a free speech and changing governments on a regular basis and all of those matters which are so frightening to repressive regimes. But now in China, in, in some universities, you must uh, register your true name and BBS. I think it is to constraint, yes. um, not allowed you to say something. How can, can democracy coexist with uh, dictatorship in one country? It's totally impossible. It, uh, it is, it, the Communist Party said it has introduced uh, uh, the local direct uh, village level uh, uh, direct election. Uh, uh, it introduced uh, in 1988. We still don't know if it is successful. What we know is that uh, uh, the village party secretary general is still in control. So what kind of uh, election? It's totally a lie. It has been tested for over uh, uh, seven, 17 years. He claimed that uh, we can uh, escalate democracy from village level to county level, provincial level, then national level. <laughs> That's totally a lie. 
can the Chinese people wait for over uh, uh, 30 or 40 years for final national level election? And uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's just uh, an excuse. And so far we haven't seen that uh, the, uh, the communist government uh, has any willingness uh, to, uh, to introduce the county level uh, uh, direct uh, election. Future? Mm. Mm. I think it depends on the government. I think uh, it's quite, quite, quite good so far. But um, I think we should put more focus on spiritual beauty, education, and the government should be more clean, and they should um, really think what people think. Tibet is slowly being turned into a Chinese place. But the fact is that Tibetans, on the whole, have also been nonviolent, and Tibetans have not abandoned their adherence to the Dalai Lama. And it's a kind of a lesson which, well, see, there are two lessons here. One is the Chinese government has not learned the lesson of what it is about Tibetan Buddhism or about Islam in Xinjiang, or about the Falun Gong. But at the same time, they have learned a lesson. They know that these are forms of belief and forms of activity which, in fact, are antithetical and dangerous to communism. So they're surprised at the, at the tenacity of these beliefs, but also they can, to a certain degree, smash them. I have quitted the, from the Communist Party. I'm not afraid of uh, it uh, anymore. In Australia, and uh, there may be some some threat from the Communist Party mm, that, uh, uh, but uh, I I won't be scared. The uh, most important that uh, uh, that uh, I have uh, specially uh, got uh, rid of uh, the Communist Party, but uh, uh, a lot of Chinese migrants from mainland, they you know they still you know have some shadow in their heart. All the Chinese people have been spiritually brainwashed since our childhood. And we said we have uh, our blood contaminated. And uh, we said we uh, drink wolf milk for so long time. So we are not uh, pure anymore. And the most important thing for us is to uh, uh, to remove the such the poisonous elements from our blood, and uh, we uh, sh we should wake up that uh, communist party is an evil force in the history, and. Uh, it's a continuing uh, persecution against people should be stopped. It is true resistance works, but it is also true that oppression works. 
and uh, this is an old story. It's because they copied this system from the Stalins. Um, actually, the um, this the system is being controlled is being run by nine people in the Politburo, <laughs> in the central governments. Everything is accountable for them. So um, the corruption is is very prevalent because there is no check and balance in the system. The party collapse, uh, that's the uh, hope of China. The China won't collapse. The uh, Chinese people will get uh, fundamental human rights, uh, will have uh, freedom of speech, freedom uh, of uh, worshipping, freedom uh, of uh, any uh, political uh, opinion, including independence of Taiwan, independence of Tibet, independence of other uh, 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 region in China. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's good for the Chinese people. We care about uh, human rights more than the so-called uh, nationalism. Nationalism is a uh, propaganda doctrine for of, uh, the, uh, the Chinese communist party. It's a, a political liar. In my view that the Chinese, Chinese has a very long history of, uh, of culture, broader uh, uh, civilization. It, it has been, you know, the values of the traditional values ha has been, have been uh, totally destroyed by communism ideology by the violence doctrine of, uh, of uh, the communism. In the past 58 years, the Chinese people have been uh, spiritually brainwashed uh, and uh, the people, the, this nation, the Chinese nation, has lost its uh, soul and, uh, and uh, people submit themselves to the one evil party evil party, a killing party, a killing that, uh, you know, the, the, Chi the Communist Party uh, ruled China uh, by killing and uh, then covering, you know, use, uh, use lies to cover the, the, the killing. And uh, so it's a uh, Uh, first of all, can I thank Guja for joining us on the telephone, and I realize he's doing so at some risk to himself. I was in, supposed to meet Gao Zhisheng, but all the ambassadors said, do not meet him, and then I discovered that the people I had already met had been arrested. 